We've been talking about solutions, and now we're going to talk about concentrations in quantitative terms and, um, and do some calculations and stuff. So one way to quantitatively describe a solution concentration is with mass percent. Chemists don't use mass percent a lot, but um, other sciences do. And mass percent is a true percent. Percent means per hundred. So this is the number of grams of solute per hundred grams of solution. So a solution with a concentration of 14% would have 14 grams in 100 grams of the solution. And so it's a really nice measure of concentration if you're just dealing with masses, if you're not concerned with number of particles. So here's the equation. It's the mass of the solute divided by the mass of the solute plus the mass of the solvent. Remember, there's at least two parts to a solution, a solvent and a solute. And so what we have down here is the mass of the whole solution, and that's really important. See this note here? The denominator is the mass of the solution. <coughs> and there will be a question on the exam that tries to trick you and gives you mass of solute and mass of solvent. And I always fool a surprising number of students who put it into the equation wrong. So I'm warning you, watch out for that one. It'll be there. So this is the sort of question that involves that particular trick. Calculate the mass percent of a sucrose solution containing 11.3 grams of sucrose and 412.1 milliliters of water. And we're told to assume that the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Well, calculate the mass percent. We need the equation. So mass percent, I'm not writing very well, mass percent equals, it's the mass or the grams of solute divided by the grams of solution times 100. That helps us to know what we're looking for. To plug into this equation, we need mass of solute and mass of solution, the whole thing. Here they've given us the mass of the solute. It's a sucrose solution dissolved in water. So we can plug that in. We've got 11.3 grams in the numerator. What's the mass of the solution? Well, the solution includes the sucrose and the water. They gave us a volume of water, the stinkers, but they thoughtfully provided the density. We need to calculate the mass of this water. And some of you may look at that and say, oh, well, it's the same. It's 412.1 grams. Well, yes, it is, but let's, let's show why it is. 412.1 milliliters. The density allows us to convert to grams. We're going to put the units in so they work out. Milliliters are going to cancel milliliters, and we're left with grams in the numerator. The density is 1.00 grams, 1.00 grams per milliliter. And now that math, we don't need a calculator for. That's 412.1 grams. That is the mass of the water. Water here is what part of the solution? Solvent or solute? It's the solvent. It's not the mass of the whole solution. How do we get the mass of the whole solution? add them together. There's two parts. There's the water and the sucrose, so we'll add them together. So 412.1 grams plus 11.3 grams. I did that this morning in my head, but my brain's tired, so I'm not going to do that again. 
423.4. That's the mass of the whole thing. That's what we need up here in the denominator. So 423.4 grams. Notice the grams will cancel out times 100. We end up with a unit that is just percent. So divided by 423.4 times 100. How many significant figures should my percent have? Three. These numbers that we started with, 11.3 has three sig figs. This volume of water has four. Three is smaller, so we'll report this to three as 2.67%. Any questions? We've done some percentages before. We talked about percent yield and how percent yield should not be over 100, but occasionally it is for things like your sample was wet or it got contaminated or a different reaction happened. So there's some errors that can happen that could cause your percent yield to be over 100. A percent mass over 100 is completely impossible, right? Because here's the sucrose solution. The sucrose has a mass. The water has a mass. In order for the percent of by mass to be over 100, the mass of the sugar would have to be larger than the mass of the sugar plus the mass of the water. The only way you could do that is if your water has a negative mass. Is there negative mass? No. Now maybe the astrophysicists would disagree with you on that, but we're not at that level. So if you get a number greater than 100, something went wrong. There are some other commonly used units that are related to mass, by, mass percent. Um, parts per 100. That is exactly the same as percent. Percent means per hundred. Parts per billion is generally abbreviated PPM. Um, it's the number of grams of solute per one million grams of solution. Parts per billion is grams per billion grams. And so if you need to calculate those, the formula is very similar. Um, parts per million would equal grams of solute divided by grams of solution. In per hundred or percent, we multiplied by 100. This is per million. What should we multiply by? Million. So times 1 million or 10 to the sixth. And that will get you the concentration in parts per million. The place I most often see units like parts per million and parts per billion is on the report that I get from the city every year about water quality, right? And it lists all these different things, and this is big, complicated chart, and I think most people go, huh, ah, and throw it away. Um, I occasionally look at it. But they list a lot of the things that might be in your water in concentrations of parts per million and parts per billion. And the reason that we have these different units is so that the numbers, when we express that concentration, can be reasonable. So if we had a number that was, um, you know, say 50 parts per million, if we express that as a percent, that would be like 5 times 10, I'm doing this in my head, which is dangerous, it's 5 times 10 to the minus uh, okay, back up. When we, I, I, I don't want to go to a specific example. When we have very, very small concentrations, we could end up with numbers like 5 times 10 to the minus 7th percent. 
and then you're trying to compare that with four times 10 to the minus fifth percent. And it gets all icky and ugly. And we adjust the unit size to match what we're measuring. Just like we don't measure the distance between Visalia and Fresno in inches, right? Because it's a, it would be a crazy big number. We talk about miles instead. So that's why we have these different units, so that you can express the amount of lead in water as one part per billion, instead of saying that it's you know one times ten to the minus five or one times ten to the minus seven. Like I said, my my brain's not working so good today. It's been on the fritz lately. Um, we can use mass percent in calculations. Mass percent ends up being a very useful conversion factor. And we do this by remembering that mass percent is grams per 100 grams. You can also use the equation that we use to calculate the mass percent. And you can use algebra and rearrange the equation and solve it that way. And if that makes more sense to you, you go right ahead and do it. But I think using the mass percent as a conversion factor works a lot better. And there's other people who may have been taught in, in school how to use percentages, and you're really good at using percentages. That's fine. You can do them that way, too. But I'm going to show you this way. So whatever the percent is, it's that many grams per 100 grams of solution. So if we look at this, how much sucrose in grams is contained in 355 milliliters of a soft drink containing 11.5% sucrose? And here, they're, again, they're giving us the density. So this is a 12-ounce can. That's the English unit. So that was just kind of for our information. This is the number we're going to use. So let's write out some of these numbers. We've got 355 milliliters. And we've got 11.5%. And we've got 1.04 grams per milliliter. Those are all the numbers that we were given. What are they asking us to find? How much sucrose in grams, right? Is sucrose the solute or the solvent? Solute. It's sugar. So we're trying to find grams of solute. Well, we've got these numbers. We wrote down 11.5%. Let's write it down as what it means. 11.5% means 11.5 grams of solute per what? Per 100 grams of solution. That looks like a conversion factor, doesn't it? Anytime we see something per something, think that might be a conversion factor. This down here looks like a conversion factor too, doesn't it? Relating grams and milliliters. And this guy up here does not look like a conversion factor, just milliliters. So we're trying to get to this one, right? We're trying to get to grams of solute, but we've got milliliters. So let's think and write out a path way up here at the top. We've got milliliters. Using the density, we could convert that to what? Grams. Is that grams of solute or grams of solution? That would be the whole solution, right? That's the, that's the soda. So solution. From grams of solution, what could we get to? using this guy. Here we have a relationship between grams of solution and grams of solute. So we'll take our 355 milliliters. That's the volume of the solution. And we're going to convert that to grams. We want to divide by milliliters 
and multiply by grams, that's going to be grams of solution. And the next step was to grams of solute. And then we want to divide by grams of solution. It's all about the units. Relationship between grams of solution and milliliters of solution. What number? 1.04. So 1.04 grams. I'm just going to cross that guy out now because I've used him. Then over here, grams of solute, grams of solution, this has those units. 11.5 with the solute. So that goes on top. And 100 on the bottom. Three fifty five times one point oh four times eleven point five divided by one hundred. I'm looking at sig figs three 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 so I'm gonna write three here. Forty two point five grams of solute, which is sucrose in this case. Any questions? The thing about problems like this is that they are not all presented in exactly the same way. And we do that on purpose on an exam to see if you actually understand what you're doing rather than just following an example. Examples are great and they can help us learn, but if all you're doing is finding the exact same kind of problem and putting the numbers for this problem in, then you're maybe not understanding the problem. And then if you get one that's got a little twist in it, it's going to mess you up. This one would have been simpler if they gave us grams of solution, but they gave us milliliters. They could have given us gallons or something and made us do even more conversions. That wouldn't be very nice. 